Let's go back tonight to another time, the time of King George III of England. But our story tonight is not of monarchy. It's the story of an ordinary man by the name of Samuel Jones, who had the extraordinary profession of state executioner. Tonight's Lights Out presents another psychological drama, a play in which the principal part is taken not by the character himself, but by his thoughts. The voice you are about to hear is that of the thoughts of one Samuel Jones, the state executioner for His Majesty George III. He sits alone in a dismal room, and these are his thoughts. I want to be dead, dead, dead. Do you feel anything when you're dead? Are you hungry? Are you cold? Are you tired when you're dead? No? When I'm dead, I'll have peace, peace. I've got to have peace, kill myself. Yes, bullet in my heart. The pain, I don't like pain, but it can't hurt. They say it doesn't hurt, only hanging hurts. I know it does. I've seen their faces when they cut them down, purple, black. I've seen their faces when the masks came off and there's pain in them, pain that twists their faces, grinds their teeth and gives them living hell until at last they die. That's why I've got to use this pistol to kill myself. I can't stand pain. All I want is peace, peace. It's getting late. I've got to do it quick before they get here. I ran much faster than they did, but they've got here quick enough. I've got to be dead when they come in through that door. They can't bother the dead in their grave. I'll be dead, dead, deep, deep in the grave. Why should they blame me? I only did my duty. Someone's got to be the hangman. Someone's got... That's what he said to me that night. That's what his lordship said to me 20 years ago it was. He said... Samuel Jones, eh? Yes, your worship. What makes you think you can do this work? Oh, I... I just know, Your Worship. I, hmm. I know all about hanging, sir. Everything there is to know. Well... Uh, hemp rope's best, sir. Hemp rope. But each rope's got to be fresh and new for every job. And you've got to keep it soapstoned and always in a cool, dry place. Well, you do know something about it. Oh, yes, sir. Then there's a short drop and a long drop. The long drop's better, sir. I know it is. Eh? It breaks their neck, sir. Every time it breaks their neck. All right. I'll give you your chance. We're having a hanging here tomorrow. I'll let you do it. If all goes well, I'll recommend you to the prison board. If all goes well. All did go well. Why not? And there I was, executioner for His Majesty. Five guineas a broken neck. 777 hangings in 20 years. 777 broken necks and mine the hand that sprung the trap. 777 times. And now the hand's got a pistol in it. When they reach here, when they knock on that door, I'll press the trigger and so I won't have them face them. None of them. 777 broken necks and no one knew that I was the man who did it. Not even she knew it. Ellen, my own wife, not even she. I met her, married her, and she didn't know. Until that day. Infernal day, that meddling fool nosing around. It's the truth. I'm telling you, Mrs. Jones, it's God's bit judge. Oh, no, no, there must be some mistake. No mistake at all, Mrs. Jones. No mistake at all. My husband told me. And he never makes mistakes. Not me husband. What did you say? State executioner. You know your husband's the... Oh, don't you know? Please, I don't know what you're talking about. Look here, look here. Don't you know what your husband does? You mean the business he's in? Business. I hang him for business. Hanging? Hanging. On a rope. But what has Samuel to do with those? Mrs. Jones, are you saying you don't know that Samuel's the hangman? You must be crazy. Oh, so I'm crazy, am I? Well, he's the hangman. And no mistake about it. He's not. And I tell you... He's me... not. He's not. Get out of here. Get out. Get out. Well, now, you don't have to be... Well, here he is. Ask him yourself. Oh, Sam. What's going on here? What's the matter? 
What is it, Ellen? Oh, Sam, this, this woman. What about this woman? What? Oh, I've done is to tell the gods, Sam. Oh, Sam, she says, she says... Says what? What? All I said was that you were the angsman, as you are. Get out of here. Now, just a minute. Get out, get out. All right, I'll go, I'll go. Say one more word about me and I'll kill you. You hear me? I'll kill you. <laughs> Meddling fools. Meddling fools. Sam. You shouldn't have talked to her. Why did you listen? Sam. Things like that. It isn't good for me. Sam, it is true. Man's got to earn his living. I'm living from killing. You're crazy. I don't kill. I don't condemn them. You kill. I tell you, I'm not the judge. Oh, no, Ellen. Don't touch me, hangman. All right, that's what I am. Hangman, hangman. Hangman. Yes, hangman, hangman. Say it again and again. What do I care? I like being a hangman. You hear me? I like being a hangman. Oh, no. Yes, I'll get something more. No, Sam. I like killing them. No, no. I like the way they stumble when they walk up the stairs. No, no. I like the cold whiteness of their skins when I put the noose around their necks. I like the way everyone looks at me, watches me, and then the crash of the rope stretches. Sometimes their legs kick in the air and you hear them heaving for a little while. They can't get past the tight rope around their necks. No, 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 Sam. No, Sam. No, Sam. When, when I was a boy, they strung no. a man up from a tree just outside of the town. And I watched him and I saw him dance on air. And I said to myself, someday I'll do that too. No. Hang them, legal, make them dance on air because it's no. the law. And now I'm doing what I wanted. Executioner for the crown. And Whalen won't change it a bit. Now, come here to me. No, stay away from me. Come here. No, I won't stay with you. I won't, Hangman. I won't stay with you. I'll go away. I'll go away. I'll go away. I thought she wouldn't leave me, but she did. Ellen left me. I looked all over. Couldn't find her. After a while, I didn't care. What's a woman? I had my work. Hanging work. Five guineas are hanging and gold coin. Five of them. Five golden guineas. I like the sound of them. I like the sound of them. One... Two, three, four, five. I bought a strong box and kept them there. Every hanging meant five more. Paying me, they were for what I liked to do. It was funny, very funny. Why didn't me, sir? No, why should I? I had my work. I got to be good at my work. The courts were good, too. They gave me plenty to do. I tried out different ways. I made a hanging machine with springs and sandbags that jerked the man into the air first and then dropped him through a trap. I tried out different ropes and different running nooses. Oh, I got to be good at it in 20 years. Real good. Ticking, ticking, stop ticking. I hear you, blasted clock. I hear you. What are you trying to tell me? I know. There isn't much time left. They'll be here soon. Let them come, let them come. I'm ready. Pistol in my hand, I'm ready. After the first knock on the door, I won't be here to hear them. I'll have peace and quiet. Whatever they say to me, I won't hear it because I'll be dead. And why should they say it? What's done is done. 777 of them. It was fun because each died different. 777 different hangings. It was fun, I tell you, fun, fun. Summer morning. And some went to the gallows of crying. <laughs> Best of all, I like the one that went out crazy scared. Oh, no. oh, Free, no. yes, wait. Yes. The ones that were crazy scared were the best. I like them fine. And five guineas just the same for having fun five guineas. <gasps> Once that at the door, I heard a sound. No. I just imagine no one's knocking. If they knock, I press the trigger. They won't get me, not me. 777 at five guineas each. Coins that bit into my flesh when I grabbed them tight. Oh, I like the sound. Money, money, yellow money. First, I like the hangings best. And then the money. Then I got to like them both. Watching, eager around the courtrooms, this trial, that trial. Would they hang him? Would they hang her? Would the judge say guilty? If he did, matter hanging another five guineas. Well, I watch for business, new business, my business. Hang them up and watch them die. When will they knock on the door? When pistols heavy in my hand, he used the pistol too. They said Tom Allen. I read about him in the court announcement one day when I was outside of the courtroom looking for new business, hanging business. Thomas Allen. 20-year-old law student, 
was charged by the city police with having murdered his sweetheart, Lorraine Hamilton, 19-year-old daughter of Arvin Hamilton. Young Allen denied the charge vigorously. He stated that the girl had sent him a letter in which he told of her intentions of committing suicide. But at a late hour, Allen was unable to produce this letter. He was held without bond at the tower in the church. Yes, that's what it said. That's what it said. He'd murdered her, young girl. The minute I read it, I said to myself, Sam Jones is the next one. I could hear the money clinking in my hand already. And Tom Allen hanging by his neck. What am I thinking about? What am I... Why don't they come and knock on the door and let me get this over with? I need the knocking on the door to give me nerve enough to press the trigger. This waiting, waiting... I waited for Tom Allen, too. I waited for them to say guilty to him so I could put the running noose around his neck. I waited, waited, going every day to the trial. The prosecutor for the Crown said... Guilty. The young man solicitor said... Not guilty. The young man said... I didn't do it. I tell you, I didn't do it. She did it herself. She wrote me a letter saying that she was killing herself. She, she wrote me a letter. She wrote me a letter, I tell you. She wrote me a letter. Yes, that's what he said. She wrote me a letter saying she was killing herself... Where was the letter? Where was the letter? Nobody knew. Couldn't find it. And day after day, sitting there in the courtroom, I could see the noose coming close and close. A few days more and he'd be dancing on air. Another five guineas in my box. Such a pity. Such a handsome young man. Strong young neck for my rope. I say he didn't have a chance. What good did it do for his solicitor to keep saying... I tell you, gentlemen... It is circumstantial evidence and circumstantial evidence alone which has been produced. A weird combination of circumstances have conspired to make it appear that the suicide of this unfortunate girl was a murder committed by this equally unfortunate young man. And an equally weird set of circumstances have resulted in the disappearance of this vital letter which clears Tom Allen of all responsibility for Mistress Hamilton's death. In this letter, the girl clearly stated that she was taking her own life by poison. In spite of the absence of this letter, surely you as intelligent men can tell after seeing and hearing Tom Allen's testimony that he is telling the truth, that such a letter did reach him, and that he is innocent of all wrongdoing. But there was no letter. He didn't have a chance. The prosecutor for the Crown got up. He said... A letter. A mysterious letter. And where, gentlemen of the jury, is this letter? To what mystical realms has it disappeared? This wondrous communication which so conveniently absolved Tom Allen for the death of that poor girl. Where, I ask again, is this letter? The young man has stated repeatedly that the letter was in his lodging undestroyed. But every inch of that lodging has been carefully examined. And yet the letter has not been found. And why hasn't it been found, gentlemen? I will tell you. It is because that letter does not exist. Lorraine Hamilton never wrote such a letter. She was murdered. Murdered in a fit of jealous rage by this man who expects you to believe a preposterous story about her death. Yes. I sat there and I felt good. Because I saw that young fellow didn't have a chance. My noose was getting closer, closer to his neck. And then the black cap on the judge's head. For this vicious crime against the order and security of the crown, you, Thomas Allen, are hereby condemned to be hanged by the neck until dead. No! Uh No, I didn't do it. I didn't do it, I tell you. I didn't. I'm innocent. I didn't do it. I tell you, I didn't. Then I had him. All his yelling, all his screaming wouldn't do any good. I had him. All ready for my noose. Guilty. I wanted to go up and thank the judges. Gave me business, hanging business, devil's business. Why don't they hurry up and get here? I wouldn't have to think anymore. I knock on the door, I wouldn't have to think. Finger squeeze the trigger, finished piece. I won't have to think. I wouldn't have to think what happened then, what happened after they said the boy was guilty. They put him in a cell, death cell, the door shut tight. And I stood and watched. They put him in a cell. Five golden guineas in the cell. A few more weeks and he'd be mine to teach that dancing lesson on thin air. I counted every day until they'd give him to me. I peeked along the corridor watching his cell. 
The warden of the prison said, Well, Sam, it certainly looks as if you're going to have another customer. I suppose you heard about it. The king refused young Allen's last appeal. He hangs in two more days. We'll try to make his going as easy as we can. I like the lad. Too bad about that letter, he says the girl wrote him. Well, no use talking about it. We've got to do our duty. Oh, by the way, you're going past the cell? Here. Here's some books of his. His landlady sent him. Thought he might like to read them while he had the time. Take them with you, Sam, and give them to him. It'll be his last time to read. So I took the books along. Why not? Why not? Reading wouldn't save that neck. I started down the corridors with his books. Down the corridors toward the death cell. Something white fell out of one of his books and I picked it up. It was a letter and it read... Dear Tom, I told you I was going to kill myself. And now I'm going to do it. By the time you get this, the police ought to be accusing you of murder. Since undoubtedly all those people who heard us quarrel the other night will be testifying that you killed me. That's the main reason I'm sending you this letter. So that you will have some proof that the poison they'll find in me was self-administered. Forgive me. I'm just tired of living. And it was her name signed to it, hers, that girl's. The one they said he'd killed. This was the letter. The letter he'd been yelling about. The letter he wanted to save his neck. But his neck belonged to me already. Five guineas. I stuck the letter deeper in my pocket and just waited until the night. The warden... Well, Sam, it looks as if we're going to have to go through with it. Now, I want everything done properly and no mistake. Going to have a large visitor's gallery. Very distinguished people. Say, and that reminds me, there's been some woman trying to see you all day. Some woman. Don't know who she is, Sam. She says she's got to see you. Well, I wasn't seeing any woman, not that night. There was my work to do. See that everything was ready. The rope was ready. Everything perfect for a perfect hanging. It grew later and later. I could hear him in the death cell pleading with the minister. You've got to help me, sir. You've got to. You've got to get the king. He's got to believe that, that I didn't kill her. I didn't. Oh, won't anyone believe me? She wrote me a letter. She, she wrote me a letter in which she said she killed herself. She wrote me a letter, I tell you. She wrote me a letter. Yes, a letter. A letter was in my pocket and there it was going to stay until it was all over. He couldn't live. He couldn't live now. I'd waited too long. It had been such a long time since they'd given me a good, strong neck to hang. They couldn't cheat me now. At last it was the hour. They came for him in his cell. They led him down the corridor. <laughs> and then they were marching him up the stairs to the gallows. I was waiting, waiting. The rope was in my hand. The boy looked up at me, his lips moved. He said, I tell you I didn't do it. The letter. The letter. Black hood over his head. The letter. I didn't kill her. The letter. I tell you I didn't do it. The crap. His heart. This man is dead. It was done. This man is dead. Five golden guineas, the warden said. Good work, Sam. Broke his neck. <sighs> I went out into the street. I was walking home. I felt real good. Five golden guineas. A woman came up to me and said... Are you Sam Jones? Yes, that's me. What do you want? I haven't got time You'll to... You'll have time to listen to me, Hangman. Who are you? Look at me. Ellen? Yes, Ellen. Wife? Wife no longer, Hangman. No mother either. Eh? No mother either, and you're the thing that's done it. Oh, wait, what... No, I tried to reach you. I tried to tell you. They said you wouldn't see me. What could I do? What could I do? Your hand did it. Yours, Hangman, yours. What are you talking about, woman? Why? Tonight, Tom Allen. My maiden name was Allen. Don't you understand? You hung Tom Allen. Well, and so I did. What of it, woman? What of it? Tom Allen, Hangman, was your son. No. Son, your son, you hear me, Hangman, your son, you hung your son, you hung your son, your son, you hung your son, your son, your son, you hung your son. I began to run. Down the street. Away from her. Running. Running. 
A man stepped out of the shadows. He stopped me. I, I couldn't see his face. You killed my brother seven years ago this night, Hangman. I said, no, no, no. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I, I kept on running. A woman stopped me. You killed my brother seven years You hung my father, monster. You hung my father 11 years ago. No, no. I said, no. Let me go. Let me go. I kept on running. But they kept after me. Yelling. Screaming. I kept on running. Faster. Faster. New voices joined them. I looked back. The street was black with hundreds chasing me. Yelling. Screaming. I hung their sons, fathers, brothers. The street was black with them, I tell you, and every one of them akin to one of the 777 that had felt my rope. Chasing me, chasing me. Hundreds of them yelling, screaming after my life, wanting my blood. Hands up, stretched like claws. to catch me, tear my flesh, and stretch my eyes up. Running, running, looking, catch me. No! That's the way I did it. That's the way I did it. Slammed the door, lost the pack of them. Every one of them, wives and sons and brothers of the 777. But they'll find me. They'll search me out. They're searching out. Yes, they'll find me. That's why my finger's on the pistol. The mob won't get me. No, the mob won't get me. (laughs) Funny mob they were. But not bodies, just heads. Heads of people chasing me and yelling. They won't get me. No, they won't. When they find me here, when they knock on that door, I'll kill myself. And they're here outside the door. You won't get me. Not you. Yes, I hung your sons, husbands, killed your friends, lovers. But that's not all. I hung my son. You hear me? Hung my son for five guineas. Hung my son. <laughs> yes. Come in. Come in, all of you, and see me die. And you mean to say he yelled out for you to come in and then he shot himself? You yes, said It's the gold's truth. I knocked on the door. He yelled, come in. Come in, all of you, and see me die. And when I opened the door, bang, he did it. And what were you banging on his door for this early in the morning? What were you after? After? After nothing. I was looking for McDonald's. Lives next house. I just knocked on the wrong door. <laughs> 